born are natural rights. If you want to go even one step back further. So these are our political and civil rights. Government, you can't infringe our freedom of speech. You can't deprive me of my liberty or my life without due process. You can't stop us from peacefully assembling. You can't stop our presence. Here's a bunch of stuff that government, you can't do. Those are human rights. Those are our civil and political rights. Those are negative rights to things that government cannot do to us. The difference in the UN system is although that they recognize those rights, their emphasis is on a completely different set of rights called positive rights. Not what the government can't do to you, but what the government must do for you. And these are rights, as you may have figured out, are very popular among American progressives, who are the natural allies of the UN system and its, its human rights organizations. Things the government must do for you. They must provide you with free health care, they must provide you with free housing, they must provide you with, free, with social security, um, with a job, with an advocate at standard of living, with a, a number of things that you, as a human being, are you know, the government is required to give all these things to you. That's what the UN system thinks when you say human rights to them. Positive rights. So it's a completely different mindset within the UN system. And that's why their priorities are so skewed. And that's why these stories you hear from everyone on this panel just kind of you know, turn your head around because they're not even in the same world as we are when it comes to what human rights are. We want human rights to mean things that the government can't do, for, do to us, things that we preserve for ourselves, things that we preserve for our families. And this comes full circle to the issues that uh, Michael and Wendy have been talking about with these two treaties that you know, uh, we are, uh, thank God, not yet a party to, the CEDAW Treaty and the Convention on the Rights of the Child, because they're just more symptoms of the greater cancer here. They're symptoms of the disease. Because the treaties themselves are one thing. Those are international commitments that the United States would make to the rest of the world. It's a political commitment. But these committees that are making these rulings that are outlandish, about washing kids out, not miles out with soap and banning Mother's Day. They're just another creature of the UN system. They're dominated by the same voting blocs that dominate the General Assembly, that dom dominate the Human Rights Council. It's just another iteration that they dominate the treaty committees that are passing down judgments on these treaties. So it's no surprise when you look at the membership on some of these uh, committees, the the membership, the current membership of the Committee on the Rights of the Child includes Syria, Egypt, and Algeria. Not countries that I think most American families are really looking to for guidance when it comes to raising children. The CEDAW uh, Committee, this is the committee that's supposed to be looking over all the, the rights of, of women and, and protecting women against discrimination, currently include Cuba, Algeria, Egypt, and China. Again, not the paragons of women's rights around the world. So how is it that the United States, and you've got, you know, which should become a part of these treaties. I don't think they should, but you've got lots of senators that are currently in office that would love to give their consent to ratification of this treaty. Next year is a big year for this. You have to keep your eyes and ears open. It's a non-election year. The administration is going to be looking for a, a treaty win and a foreign policy win. So the, the possibility that this Convention on the Rights of the Child with the CEDAW treaty coming up is quite real. And if you want this type of guide is to be uh, the guide for um, American policy when it comes to the rights of the child and gender discrimination, then uh, don't become active on these issues. If you, if you think that we should keep things as we are, protect our sovereignty, look to our families, look to our churches, look to our traditions for what constitute our human rights, our human rights, look to our constitution, then I would ask you to please do get engaged and contact your senators when and if these treaties should come up, or before, and let them know where, what you think about these treaties. Uh, thank you very much. How long was Obama or Bush, or whomever? So it's not about the first, but how can we make it more appealing? Uh, my brother in 1983 was murdered in Chicago. He was going to school, Columbia College, he had just been interviewed for WBBM Radio there, had a job lined up, he was murdered by a kid coming to the store where he was working, honest, and honest living, he was a Christian young man, 22 caliber of pistol uh, for instance. So for me, you know, we're taking up arms, and, we, I, and then in Chicago now, the rate 
of black on black crime and murders is absolutely just so we, we need to be made to feel more comfortable. Again, my our conviction is, you know, wrong is wrong biblically. I don't care who's in office. Right. So, uh, you know, how can we make this more appealing to people? And we don't want, I, I don't, don't want to go back to where our people weren't treated like human beings and we were considered, considered child. So, I mean, that's kind of like, you know, I'm just giving you some insight on how some of our people, intelligent ones, are thinking. So how can we make it, make it look up? Thank you.